welcome to Urinetown. Not the place, of course, but the musical. Urinetown, the place. Well, it's a place you'll hear people referring to a lot throughout the show. You hear the news? They carted old so-and-so off to Urinetown the other day. Is that so? What'd he do? Oh, such and such, I hear. What do you know? Old so-and-so. It's kind of a mythical place, you understand? A bad place. A place you won't see until act two, and then, well, let's just say it's filled with symbolism and things like that. But you're in town, the musical. Well, here we are. Welcome. It takes place in a town like any other town that you might find in a musical. This here is the first setting of the show. As the sign reads, it's a public amenity, meaning public toilet. People here have been waiting for hours to get in. It's the only amenity that they can afford to get into. Say, Officer Lockson, is this where you tell the audience about the water shortage? No, uh, what's that, little Sally? You know, the water shortage, the hard times, the drought, a shortage so awful that private toilets eventually became unthinkable. A premise so absurd whoa, that- Whoa, 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 whoa there, little Sally. Not all at once. They'll learn more about the water shortage in the next scene. Oh, I guess you don't want to overload them with too much exposition, huh? Everything in its time, little Sally. You're too young to understand this, but nothing could kill a show like too much exposition. How about bad subject matter? Well... Or a bad title, even. That could kill a show pretty good. Well, little Sally, it's suffice to say that in your intent, the musical, everyone has to use the public bathroom in order to take care of their private business. It's a central conceit of the show. Better hope your pennies add up to the fee. We can't have you peeing for free. If you do, we'll catch you. We, we never fail. And we never bother with jail. You'll get your return. Public bathrooms are owned by a private company. They keep admission high, generally. So if you're down to your luck, you just have to come to a place like this. One of the poorest and filthiest urinals in town. And you can't just go in the bushes either. There's laws against it. That's right, little Sally. Harsh laws, too. That's why little Sally here is counting her pennies. Isn't that so, little Sally? I'm very close, officer. Only a few pennies away. Aren't we all, little Sally? Aren't we all? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but could you tell me the way to the private company that controls these public bathrooms? You mean, you're in good company? <laughs> That's the one. You meet the guy who runs you're in good company. That there is his daughter. It's quite a ways from here, ma'am. This here's the bad part of town. So it is. But if you squint, you can just make this you can just make their headquarters rising above the skyline. The gleaming tower on the hill? That's the one. Gosh, it's beautiful. You most certainly are. Pardon? It most certainly is. Oh, dear, I'm late already. Thanks ever so much for the directions and such. <laughs> Bye. Anytime. Well, we've talked long enough, I imagine. Enjoy the show and welcome to Urinetown, the musical. Just say your time. 
All right, folks, you know the drill. Form a line and have your money ready. We will not be repeating yesterday's fiasco, and that includes you, old man strong. 496, 497, just a few more. Penny for a pea, sir? <gasps> oh, please, sir, spare a penny for a morning pea, sir? What? what? Or a nickel, or a dime? Out of my way, child. I ping my own pretenses. But! I haven't got it. Then go get it. Come on, Penny. You know I'm good for it. You said that last week, and I still haven't seen Penny one. And it's Miss Pennywise to you. Bobby, Bobby, reason with the woman. I'm a little short this morning. No shorter than yesterday. Unless I've grown. He's my paw, Miss Pennywise. Can't he come in for free just this once? No buts, Bobby. No one's getting in for free. Now, Miss Pennywise, we've all had to make special arrangements with people in high places over the years. Why not let this one be ours? If Old Man Strong gets in for free, then so do I. And I. And I. Yeah. 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 No one's getting anywhere for free. Don't you think I have bills of my own to pay? Don't you think I have taxes and tariffs and payoffs to meet too? Well, I do. And I don't pay them with promises, you see. I pay them with cash, cold, hard cash. Every morning you've come here, and every morning some of you got reasons why you ain't gonna pay. And I'm here to tell you, you is gonna pay. But Miss Pennywise. No buts, Bobby. In the name of God, Penny, what difference could it make? What difference? Times are hard, I cash is tight, I've got no right, I've heard it all before. Justice once is once too much, cause once they once the wanna once once more. I run the only toilet in this part of town, you see. So if you've got to go, you've got to go through me. Oh, Ew. Yeah. It's a privilege to pee. Water's worth its weight in gold these days. No more bathrooms like the olden days. You come here and pay a fee for the privilege to pee. 20 years we've had the drought, and our reservoirs are all dried up. I take my baths now in a coffee cup. I boil what's left of it for tea. It's a privilege to pee. The politicians in their wisdom saw that there should be a law. The politicians touched the toilets and made illegal public urination and defecation. So come and give There's no telling what I might do. You think you got some kind of right? Kind of right, kind of right. You think you'll come in here and go for free? Go free the only thing you'll get is no for free. For I'm a business gal, you see. I sell the privilege to be. I think 
I'll charge you twice. No need to jeopardize your position. Or better yet, have you arrested? I'm through with all this, you see. Since you prefer the law gets tested. We've been cast together three times a day. And in your in town, you see. Crazy with the night race at the time. Why it's dumb to fight with me. It's no way to live, I tell you. No way to live. For the privilege to pee. Doing? Have you lost your mind? More than that, Bobby. A whole lot more than that. Looky there. It's old Mr. Strong. He ain't waiting. He's peeing right there on the street he is. If he's going, then I'm going. Oh, no, you're not. All right, then, make way. Make way, damn it, make way! Ah, uh, that's better. So, if it ain't old man Strong. The same. Is this your doing strong? It is. Take him away! Yeah. You've done a terrible thing here today, Strong. I did what I thought was necessary. Grab him up, Bobby. Never thought I'd live to see the day. Breaking the Public Health Act is an exiling offense, Strong. Quite exiling. So what if it is? I feel better and that's all I care about. Oh, Pa. I always knew it would get you in the end, Joseph Strong. Take him away! Bobby! Pa! Don't forget me, Bobby! I won't, Pa! I tell your mother! Tell your mother I love her! I will, Pa! I will! Remember me, boys! Oh, God! What have I done? Remember me! Remember! How he indulged your whim. Remember. Remember how he made the mockery. He shunned the crockery off to the dockery. Don't be like him. What became of him? What do you mean by that? Just keep your head out of the clouds, Bobby Strong. That's all I'm saying. Good day. All right, he's ready to pay. It's my last few dollars, but I'll pay. Me too. Me too. We'll all pay, Bobby Strong, for always and forever, just so long as you keep letting us pay. Oh, Pa, what's become of you? Back to work then, Bobby, and morning rushes on. Isn't that the question we're all asking ourselves, Senator? Where's my dough? From the cop walking his beat to the little baby asleep in his mother's arms, we're all asking the same question. Where's my dough? And by dough, of course, I mean money. I made my speech. Where's my dough? We'll all be full of dough, Senator, just as soon as the new fee hikes breeze through the legislature. I was hoping to wait for the vote on my latest fact-finding mission to Rio. Wouldn't want to be around when the new fee hike freezes through. You think I've gone too far this time, don't you, Fit? It's a powder keg out there, Cladwell. This time, I think it's gonna blow. Daddy? What? <laughs> oh, darling, I thought you'd never get here. Sorry I'm late, Daddy. I came just as soon as my exams were finished. How's everything, dear? Fine, Daddy. Just fine. It feels great to be done with school. <laughs> Finally. You see that, Mr. McQueen? Beautiful, big-hearted, now with a head filled with the best stuff money can buy. Well, if the stuff in her head is as big as the stuff in her heart, 
I'm sure she'll be running this company in no time. <laughs> That'll be all, Mr. McQueen. Okay, then. <laughs> well, I'll be Pope Plaza. And all grown up. Hello, Senator. Come to join your father's little operation. It's just a fax slash copy position, of course. <laughs> First day. A fax slash copy girl, huh? Your father mentioned he was bringing on a new fax slash copy girl. He neglected, however, to mention how beautiful she'd be. You'd be. You're so beautiful. Ever since you were a little girl, I always thought... <clears throat> That'll be all, Fip. Yes, of course. Anyway, won't want to keep you, Senator. It's a big day. I'm sure you'll have your hands full on the floor of the legislature. What with the new fee hike vote and all. Oh, my hands will be full, Cladwell. Just as long as by this time tomorrow, I get them full of cash. Oh, we'll be all full of cash, Senator. Just as long as the voters come through. Oh, the vote will come through, Cladwell. Just as long as you come through with the cash. Once the votes, once the vote comes through, there'll be nothing left to come through but the cash. Oh, no need to worry. I think we understand each other. Fip. <laughs> yes. Well. Okay. Let's meet the staff, shall we? Staff. This here is my daughter and our newest fax slash coffee girl, Hope Cladwell. Hope, the good people of You're in Good Company, or UGC, as it's known for short. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello, Hope. Say a few words, Hope, darling. Uh, well, it's a great company, and I hope to help to make it even greater. <laughs> Absolutely right, Hope, dear. Absolutely right. For you see, ladies and gentlemen, I came to the people of this community with a simple proposition. Look the other way while we run the company the way we see fit, and we'll keep the pee off the streets and the water in the ground. Hope here has come to join our little operation to help me keep that promise. So promise me you'll treat her like the Cladwell she is. For one day, she may be standing in the very shoes you see me wearing today. The same shoes I wore when I made that promise many years ago. I saw gray skies foreboding and cold. I saw gray skies and made them rain gold. Now the skies are so bleak to behold. They're still gray, but they pay for your salaries tenfold. I took this town that formerly stank I took this town and made it smell swank I made flushing mean flush at the bank I'm the man with the plan and so whom should you thank? Whom? Mr. Gladwell Who, me? We're so thankful oh, no. for no. that faithful of dough You're a Tory and Tor and it's cash that you bore Could we hope for much more? You may be right there. Mr. Gladwell, you got riches, which is just what we need. We say hail to you, then you got the ducats. I can bring in bucks by the buckets. You're the nasty, you're, you're making money. Faster still than bees making honey. You're Mr. Gladwell. Gosh, Daddy, I didn't realize that large monopolizing corporations could be such a force for good in the world. Few do. <laughs> All those coins that we take from the throng End up here where those coins all belong Ooh. Lots of coins make our company strong Charging fees as we please, it's all right, it's not wrong uh, We're not greedy, as some make us see We need funds for a big research team Still we can dream of Mr. Yeah. 
and to get your pretentious Fancy free and so conscientious Why's a trend tough as a mountain Goodness flows from you like a mountain Your mister Your mister Nonsense! Did I send you to the most expensive university in the world to teach you how to feel conflicted? Or to teach you how to manipulate great masses of people? To learn how to manipulate great masses of people, Daddy. And that's exactly what we'll do. Now get faxing. And copying. And welcome home. <laughs> Five hundred thirty-six, five hundred thirty-seven, just a few more. Well, hello there, little Sally. Awfully late for you to be out and about, especially on a night like tonight. Oh, just trying to scrape together a few coins before the late night rush is all. Got one to spare? Sure, I'm in a good night tonight. Gee, thanks! Say, Officer Lockstock, I've been thinking. We don't spend much time on hydraulics, do we? Hydraulics, little Sally? You know, hydraulics. Hydration, irrigation, or just plain old laundry. Seems that with all the talk of water shortage and drought and whatnot, we might spend time on those things too. After all, a dry spell would affect hydraulics too, you know? Why sure it would, little Sally, but... Uh, hmm, how should I put it? Sometimes, in a musical, it's better to focus on one big thing rather than a lot of little things. The audience is much happier that way, and it's easier to write. One big thing, huh? That's right, little Sally. Oh. Then why not hydraulics? Run along now, little Sally. You won't want to miss the last call. Miss Pennywise won't keep the gate open forever. Oh, yeah, right. Thanks for the coin. Bye. <sighs> What a night. Everything clean all right, Miss Farrell? Sure, same as always. But did you hear him scream, though, Mr. Lockstock? Old man strong? All the way down to Yarntown. Oh, yes. I heard him. But then again, they all seem to scream in the end now, don't they? As the long journey into exile comes to a close, and the spires of Yarntown peak above the horizon, they do scream then, Miss Farrell. They must certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I thought he might be different somehow. Different? Old man strong, always seemed a bit tougher than the rest. I was hoping he might, I don't know, surprise us somehow. If there's one thing that I've learned in my many years of enforcing laws in this city, is that the journey down to Urinetown offers no surprises, not even from the very toughest among us. On that journey, expect only the expected. It's a hard, cold, tumble of a journey Worthy of a gurney, a bumble down A slap, face, smacked with the mace Searching to the base as a stumble down It's a path that leads you only one place Horrible to retrace a crumble down A hard, cold, tumble of a journey Jumble of a journey to your in town Julie Cassidy went to a field behind the tree Saw there was no one who could see her me But me and Jacob Rose and Bloom he was safe up in his room Didn't know the jaws he kept up there Would obligate a trip for your entomb! <laughs> there are those who think our method's vicious Overly malicious A bunch of brutes, but it's we Who gather for the people Tavern to the steeple Lawful brutes, our task Bring a little order Swindle out a hoarder For what he loots as a book says Certainly a season Trample out of treason with hot nail boots, boots. Roger Roosevelt kept a cup below his belt. Cup ran over when he knelt. He smelt. We dealt. And Joseph, old and strong, held his key for much too long. Thought his son might bail him out. His guess was good, but also wrong. <laughs> all years lived, all lived in the jungle, scooping up the bundles. Nature
nature is born. Fight of constant intervention, certain aggregations took his toll. Soon learned power of the trench and organized function came to pawn. So if this is what you're after, then you're in town's the rafter to hang it on. Jacob Rosenblum. Roger Jacob Rosenblum. Joseph Don't be like them. 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 Oh, it's a hard, cold tumble of a journey worthy of a journey of humble A slap in the face. A smack with the mist. Scratching with the pace. Off you go then, boys, and happy hunting. Hmm, yes. So, have you made plans for your journey yet? To Germantown? To Rio, of course. Oh, yes. Rio. I'd squeeze Cladwell a bit tighter than usual for our monthly payoff fees, extortion fees. Caution, Mr. Lockstock. It would seem we're no longer alone. <laughs> well, I'll be. And if I'm not mistaken, that there's his daughter. So it is. All growing up, too. Miss Gladwell. Hello, officers. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you're on a late night behind the bushes to relieve yourself for free kind of walk. Oh, no, I'm just coming home from work. <laughs> First day. Long hours? Just like us. There's some kind of big vote down at the legislature tonight. Plenty of faxing to do. And copying, I imagine. Oh, yes, and copying. <laughs> I must say, Miss Gladwell, your father mentioned the size and purity of your heart. He neglected, however, to mention the size and purity of your beauty. Does beauty have a size, officer? In some countries. I take care on these streets late at night, Miss Gladwell. There's no telling what some people wouldn't do for a few extra coins. Especially these days, what with the new fee hikes and all. Oh, I, I'm not afraid of people, officers. <laughs> oh, no? No. Everyone has a heart, you see. And if you know that, then you may never fear a soul. <laughs> Everyone? Everyone. Even criminals? Even criminals. Even policemen? What? Bobby Strong! Awfully late for you to be out and about, don't you think? Out late taking care of another late night rush is all. There's talk of more fee hikes. People are getting edgy. They are. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to see you're otherwise engaged. Wouldn't want to put you under suspicion for a late night behind bushes. I don't need to do that anymore, officers. Now that I work for Miss Pennywise, I don't. But you still need to keep your head out of the clouds now, don't you? And what do you mean by that? What she means is that you're a good boy, Bobby Strong. See that you don't end up like your father. And how did my father end up? Well, we're off. Our work is never done. Good night. Good night, officers. Good night, Bobby. You were rather brave with them. I don't care for policemen, and not those two anyway. Policemen protect the peace. Do they? Usually. Mm. Didn't I see you down at the amenity this morning? <laughs> that was me. I was on my way to work, first day. Find your way all right? The gleaming tower on the hill? Couldn't miss it. Beautiful. It's rather shiny. That's true enough. Did you mean what you were saying to those policemen about everyone having a heart? Well, sure I did. Well, because, well, mine feels awfully cold right now. Cold? Or empty. One of the two. Not because of me, I hope. Oh, no. Because of something I did. Bobby, Bobby, reason with the woman. I'm a little short this morning. No shorter than yesterday, unless I've grown. <laughs> or rather, something I didn't do. Well, if it's cold, then it must still be there, don't you think? Unless there's a vacuum where it used to be. A vacuum? In your chest? 
It sounds so implausible. <laughs> I did something wrong is all I'm trying to say, and I can't get it out of my head. The vacuum? My action. I let someone down that I love dearly, and I feel real bad about it. Well, maybe this is nature's way of telling you it's time to lift someone up. Really? Sure. Do you think you'd be feeling as bad as you do if you didn't have a heart? I don't know. I suppose not. Of course you wouldn't. Because then you'd be dead. <laughs> when darkness surrounds you and you lose your way, you have your own compass that turns night to day. And it's even with you before you depart. Be still, hear it bidding. It's leading you. Follow your heart. Follow my heart? But to where? To wherever your heart tells you to go. Even there? Even to the clouds, if, if, if that's what your heart commands. What's it saying now? I don't know. I don't know how to listen to my heart. You have to listen carefully. Here, let me try. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you should follow your heart. <laughs> Peace and joy, plenty of water. I guess I do want those things. There was something else your heart was saying. Maybe something I shouldn't have heard. There was? I think so. It was barely audible, but I definitely heard something. Well, what was it? <laughs> Let me try it again. Maybe I can make it out this time. It's so faint. <laughs> saying It was? Sure it was. Squalor and noise, hopes and joys. It was telling me about all of those things. I didn't know two hearts could speak as one. I didn't either! Until now. Here, listen. Someday I'll meet someone whose heart joins with mine. Aortas and arteries all intertwine. They'll beat so much stronger than they could apart. Chambers of muscle to hustle the love in our heart. Love is kind and considerate. Love is peaceful and fair. Love can creep up so suddenly. When you least think of it, your love is Joy, with plenty of justice for each girl and boy. That bright shining world is just waiting to start. No anger or madness. Just laughter and gladness. If only I find. Bobby Strong. <laughs> good night, Bobby Strong. And good night. Hope. Good night, Hope. 
I won't forget about what you said about the clouds in my heart. And I won't forget about what you said about the laughter and gladness. Uh, wait a minute. When will I see you again? Well, in this darkness, I'm afraid you can't see me at all. <laughs> but a bright, shining world is about to start, and I can feel it. Come to amenity number nine tomorrow, and I'll show it to you. <laughs> she loves him, doesn't she, Officer Lockstock? Well, sure she does, little Sally. He's the hero of the show. She has to love him. <laughs> yeah. Everyone loves Bobby Strong. <laughs> What's it like, Officer Lockstock? What's what like, little Sally? You're in town. Oh, I can't tell you that. Why not? Because it's a secret, that's why. Its power depends on its mystery. I just can't blurt out, there's no you're in town. We just kill people. No. The information must be oozed out slowly until it bursts forth into one mighty cathartic moment. Somewhere act two, with everyone dancing and things like that. <laughs> oh, I get it. Huh. Well, I should be going then. It's time for the next scene. The next morning at the amenity? When the new fee hikes are announced? That's the one. So long for now, little Sally, and keep your head down. And so, with this piece of paper, UGC awards a Manny number nine, the first of new and entirely legal fee hikes. <laughs> Which we hope you all, all honor and enjoy. Enjoy? enjoy. enjoy. What, the, what, what is this? What are you talking about? Seriously? Uh, of course, of course. No one knows better than the good people at You're in Good Company how difficult times are. For research into finding the long term solutions we need, is expensive. So for the time being, our decision is firm, and we look forward to going to Rio with our new profits. <laughs> I, I meant to say, we look forward to finding lasting solutions, and things like that. <laughs> well, good luck, Ms. Pennywise, and see you in, well, you know where. You can't do this to us, Miss Pennywise. It'll be off to your in town for the lot of us sooner or later if you do. And it'll be off to your in town with me if I don't. So form a line and have your money ready. The new fee hike money, that is. Miss Pennywise. Bobby Strong, where the hell have you been? Sorry I'm late, Miss Pennywise. I was up all night thinking is all. Up all night thinking? Bobby, you work here now. You don't need to go peeing in the bushes anymore. I wasn't. Like father, like son, that's what I say. Now back to work. But it was my father that I was thinking about. About what happened to him yesterday. About what's happening to all of us. He broke the law yesterday, Bobby, and that's the end of it. But what if the law is wrong? What did you say? I said, what if the law is wrong, Miss <laughs> Pennywise? What if all of this is wrong? You got a sweet looking head, Bobby, a sweet looking head. But you keep it up in those clouds, day after day after day. Get your head out of the clouds, Bobby Strong. Head out of the clouds. distance there's a beautiful horizon all right folks you know the drill gleaming and radiant it's what I'll keep my eyes on same as it's always been as the world turns to face the Sun and start another day it suddenly occurs to me that maybe we could find another way look at the sky It's a shining ideal, how I reel when I look at the sky. All right, who's first? I am. Ma! We'll take your fee now, Miss Strong. The improved fee, that is. Daily, we make them pay their nickels, dimes, and quarters. But this is all I have, Miss Pennywise. Daily, we break them, because we have to follow orders. 
haven't you enough, Mrs. Strong? And we keep filling money bags with broken lives and dreams. But what's it for? I can't ignore these black immoral profit-making schemes. Look at the sky high above this madness. Here below, feel our shame. It must stop in the name of the sky. This is all I have, Bobby. Do you think it's enough? You hold on to that money, Ma. Really? The fee is the law, Bobby. She'll abide by it, or she'll join her husband. But what if there's a new law in town, Miss Pennywise? A new law that didn't come from electoral bodies, voting processes, or a process of judicial review. No, but a law that comes from an organ. That's right, a muscular, blood-pumping organ. Like this one, right here. A muscular organ? Can't you see it, Miss Pennywise? Well, if this one's too small for you, why don't you try this one on for size? It's... It's blinding me! Look at the sky. There's a great big heart there. A what? There's a heart in the sky. There just is. Don't ask why. It's the sky. Don't do this, Bobby. You'll regret it. I don't think so, Miss Pennywise. Come on, Ma. This one's on the house. For everyone. Forever! Yay! Our heart knows all things. So, you'll be off to Rio then, I imagine. Already got my ticket. Good work on the floor of the legislature there, Fip. It was touch and go for a while, I understand. Well, your Beaches of Rio slideshow seemed to change their minds. Like it changed my mind many years ago. I wish I never met you, Caldwell B. Cladwell. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Daddy. I just wanted to make sure you got your morning faxes. Hope you're absolutely glowing. <laughs> all that office work seems to suit her. What with the faxing and all. And the copying. Oh, and copying. <laughs> you're a good girl, Cladwell. A good, good girl. I used to be. Before I met your father. A good girl? You heard me! <laughs> 493, 494. Just a few more. Daddy, can I ask you a question? What is it, dear? Do you believe in love? <laughs> love? <laughs> Why do you ask? Just, just wondering. Uh, I, I met this boy, you see. Excuse me, Mr. Cladwell. We've got a little problem. Cladwell? <laughs> Miss Pennywise? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it's about public humanity number nine, sir. The people there are rioted. Rioted? They're peeing for free, Cladwell. I tried to stop them. The assistant custodian is refusing to take people's money. A young man by the name of Bobby Strong. Bobby Strong? They've rescinded the Public Health Act. And the Water Preservation Act. 
Can they do that? Strictly symbolic, sir. The crowd gathered there is an unthinkably small percentage of the population as a whole. Daddy, what's happening? I don't understand. I wouldn't expect a pure and kind heart like yours to understand. This barrel and I are ready, Mr. Clydewell. Just give us the word. What did I tell you, Clydewell? It's a powder keg out there. And I have an important plane to catch. Excuse me. Fit. You're not going anywhere. Not until we nip this unpleasantness in the butt. N nip? How so? You're a Cladwell, Hope. What would you do if the very foundation of your life's work were threatened by the rabble-rousing son of a convicted criminal? Look deep into his heart and try to understand what made it pound so angrily. Angry? No one gets angry at me. <laughs> Not without a beating. A, a beating? Oh, Daddy, beating people is wrong. Life is a beating. The sooner you learn that, the better. Then life is wrong. Embrace it. I have. Life should be beautiful. Life is many things, Hope dear. Look closely and you'll see it. I do. A little bunny in the meadow. He's nibbling grass without a care. He's so delightful as he hops for you. <laughs> you say hi, bunny, and he stops for you. You pull your trigger and he drops for you. <laughs> Goodbye, bunny boo. Hello, rabbit stew. Get me, boys. You, you tell, tell him, boss. Don't be the bunny. Don't be the stew. Don't be the dinner, you have better things to do. It ain't no joke, <laughs> that's why it's funny. <laughs> so take your cue, don't be the bunny. Don't be the bunny. But Daddy, we're talking about people, not animals. People are animals, Hope dear. Animals with huge incisors and big floppy feet? Look closely and you'll see them. I do. I see them everywhere. A little bunny at a toll booth. He needs a measly 50 cents. A little bunny didn't plan ahead. Poor bunny simply doesn't have the bread. He begs for mercy but gets jail instead. Hassan fetters in the air as the bunny gets the chair. See the moral people. Clear as day, boss. Don't be the bunny. Don't be the dope. Don't be the loser. You're much better than that, Hope. You're born to power. You're in the money. Advice to you. In re the bunny. Don't be the bunny. But a, a bunny at a toll booth? You heard me. But Daddy. Bunnies don't drive cars. <laughs> don't they? No. Actually, I don't think they do. Live long enough, Hope dear, and you will see many things. Even a daughter doubting her father? A little bunny in a shoebox. He thinks he's found a brand new home. So snug and cozy on your closet floor. And then you open up your closet door. Now what's the bunny in my closet for? With a mallet and some clippers, you find out new bunny slippers. Grabs the message staff. Right behind you, boss. Don't be the bunny. Don't be the shoe. You don't get stepped on. No, the one who steps is you. Stepping up to where it's sunny. Step on the pole. Don't be the bunny, don't be the bunny. Wah. Wah. All right, everyone, get it together. It's time we snagged ourselves a few rabbits. <laughs> Let's go.
One at a time, one at a time. Everyone will get a turn. Here's some cash, Bobby, just for you. Keep your cash, friend, and relieve yourself in happiness. Busy day so far. Busiest on record if your books are right. How's the urinal holding out? Ooh. It's a little spillage, but there's nothing to be concerned about. But the people are happy, and that's the main thing. Police! Bug! Wait, wait, please, everyone, remain calm. It'll take a lot of explaining to keep us calm, Bobby Strong. We've taken control of this amenity, officers. The people here pee for free! Yeah! yeah! That's my amenity, officers, and I want these people taken away. Officer Lockstock, what's happening? Why, it's the Act 1 finale, little Sally. This is where Mr. Cladwell arrives to snuff the uprising. It's a whole big song and dance number involving the entire cast. Snuff out the uprising? But what about Bobby's dreams? Well, little Sally, dreams only come true in happy musicals. A few Hollywood movies, and this isn't either of those. No. Dreams are meant to be crushed. It's nature's way. This may not be a happy musical, Officer Lockstock, but it's still a musical. And when a little girl's been given as many lines as I have, there's still hope for dreams. Bobby? What are you doing, Bobby? I told you to follow your heart, not season amenity. I did follow my heart, thanks to you. The amenity won't take much more of this uprising, Codwell. Bobby's a sweet looking boy, but not sweet enough to sweeten that spillage. Not by a long shot. This amenity will take as much as it needs to, Miss Pennywise. The days of deprivation are over for these people. Yeah! yeah! The days of deprivation have just begun if this continues a moment longer. Yeah! Sure, Mr. Cladwell. That's what you've been saying for 20 years. And for 20 years, we've waited for the long-term solutions that never came. Well, we're done waiting. For a new day has dawned today. A day of hope. <laughs> and happiness. When the idea of human dignity is more than just a forgotten notion, but a living, breathing reality. A day, this day, when the people pee for free, because the people are free! Yeah! yeah! Free, people are free, how can a fee enslave us? See how we can be free from the chains he gave us. We're suffering now such lives of sorrow. Don't give us tomorrow, just give us today. Free, people are free, how can a fee enslave us? See how we can be free from the chains he gave us. We're suffering now such lives of sorrow. Don't give us tomorrow, just give us today. Charge soon. Your father? Charge? Daddy, these people need understanding, not brutality. On the contrary, a little brutality is exactly what these people need. Officer Lock. Daddy, wait! He only wants the people to be happy. Isn't that worth something? Happy, you say? Happy? So you unhappy, Mr. Strong? Did you say happy, Mr. Strong? If they pee today, I'm sure they'll be as happy as a pup. With no rules and normal fees to pay, things would be looking up. But too bad the water that we share could fit inside a cup. What of tomorrow, Mr. Strong? But what of today? What of tomorrow, Mr. Strong? Think of tomorrow, Mr. Strong. Our resources are as fragile as a newborn baby skull. With your actions, you would gut the child and leave a lifeless heart. Could it be you're so short-sighted, so insensitive, so dumb? Think of tomorrow, Mr. Strong. But what of today? You are wrong, Mr. Strong. You and your socialistic wrong. If the people keep a free, they'll push the system to the brink. If today the spill is think of how tomorrow will not stink. If it's you and me now, Mr. Strong, which one of us will blame? 
something I say it's you, Mr. Strunk Or on the subject of tomorrow You are wrong Officer Lockstock, prepare your men Everyone, run into the amenity We'll be relatively safer in there Oh, Bobby, why didn't you tell me you were going to start a revolution? Maybe for the same reason you didn't tell me you were a Cladwell. I'm the same girl I was last night. The girl last night would have joined us by now, Hope. Bobby, I can't fight against my father. And I can't not fight against him. So it's either you join us or you stand aside. Stand aside? You heard me. Bobby, think you're standing on the brink. You'll be arrested soon, perhaps as soon as noon. And I could never bear to see you taken where the guilty peers pay. The fight you can't win today, Mr. Strong. Your rabble is no match for my men. Bobby, he's right. They've got one, two men, and we're all so poor. Now release the girl. It's time you faced your punishment like a man. Release? No one's holding the girl hostage. Bobby, Bobby, reason with the woman. I'm a little short this morning. You can punish our bodies, Mr. Cladwell, but you can never punish our spirits! Punish our bodies? I never agreed to any punishment of my body! <laughs> punishment is all you'll ever know once you release the girl! Bobby, how you are wrong, Mr. Strong. No matter what we do, you are wrong, Mr. Strong. 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 Bobby, please, you are wrong, Mr. Strong. What have I done? Remember me! Not without you, they won't. Which is why you're coming with us. Coming with you? Bobby, I can't fight against my father. And I told you I can't not fight against him. So how can I come with you and not fight against my father unless... Unless... Oh, dear God! Bobby, no! <laughs> Have your daughter and we're not letting her go. Bobby, what are you In the name of the sky, you're coming with us. We're walking out of here, Mr. Cladwell, and you're going to let us. That is, if you care about your daughter. You're making a terrible mistake, Mr. Strong. Let the girl go, Bobby. She's done nothing wrong. Don't let go of the girl and follow me. Boss, what do we do? Seize them! No! Don't let them get away! Help me! Help her! Now run, everybody! Run for your lives! Run! <laughs> Let's 
that's it for Act now. 1. As you can see, the rebel poor are making their getaway as hope as their hostage. Now. The rest of us have been thrown into confusion because, well, because we're all moving so damn slowly! So we don't get to catch them! Not yet! Enjoy intermission! And see you shortly! Welcome to Act Two. Things have changed since we last saw each other, so I'll bring you up to speed on a few things. As you may remember, the Rebel Corps, under Bobby's leadership, kidnapped Hope and used her as a shield to escape due payment from my man. Word has it as they're holed up in some secret hideout place. Perhaps this one. The hell is Bobby? And little Sally? And old Lot Strong? They should have been back by now. Ah, who are we kidding? The police probably napped them hours ago. It's only a matter of time before our whereabouts are tortured out of them. And then, it'll be up to your town for the lot of us. What? What do you think that's like? Your town? Don't even ask. No one knows for sure. I have my suspicions. Oh, yeah? Sure, kid. Everyone's got suspicions. What if you're in town? You're in town's the end. So with the brutal punishment, no need now to pretend. The trap goes wrong and then you're hung. When they cut you down, they'll box you up and ship you out and call it you're in town. They'll box you up and ship you out and call it you're in town, 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 town. Dance? No, never do they dance. Those people down in your town, they never get the chance. Dancing, forget it, never, not no, unless it's at the bottom of a rope. So don't get your hopes up. And if I say they ain't back soon, we give it to her like her father was going to give it to us. People hear a lot about Eurotown, of course. That's just the way we like it. For example, a little kid once asked me, is Eurotown actually a nice place to live in? Gingerbread houses along the golden frothy canals? Like Venice, but different? I didn't say yes. I didn't say no, either. I want them found, damn it! I want my daughter released and I want Bobby Strong punished! Sir, we're working around the clock, sir, but as the sign says, it's a secret hideout, so... Enough of your excuses, Lockstock. You've got weapons. Use them. But, sir... What is your in town? Your in town's a tool, an instrument of power to enforce my iron rule. So send your troops to all the stoops and let them understand. If hope is not returned, it's your in town for all the land. If hope is not returned, it's your in town for all the land, 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 land. They think I'll dance. Those people with my daughter want to make me change my stance. Stance, dance, forget it. Never not a nine. I'll teach them not to take from me what's mine. We should hurry, sir. Mercy Planet Forum is waiting. Yes, of course, the quorum. That was a close one, Bobby. I thought Barrel saw us there for sure. We'll have to keep on our toes, Ma. At least until we distributed the rest of these memos to the other assistant custodians around the city. Do you think they'll join us? hard to say. They're scared like we used to be scared. But if it's true about everyone having a heart, they'll have to join us. What is your in town? Your in town's a lie. A means to keep the poor in check until the day they die. I did not shirk their dirty work, but things are different now. We'll fight our right with all our might until we win somehow. We'll fight our right with all our might until we win somehow. How, 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 how? My heart is like a stallion racing through a great expanse. Canyons of freedom, that's where it will waltz. Performing coronary somersaults. Your heart is like a stallion? I'll explain on the way, Ma. Come on, let's go. Where are they hiding, little Sally? 
Tell me and I'll see things go easy on you. Easy on me? You mean like sending me to the nice part of your in town? <laughs> that can be arranged. Save it for one of your other stoolies, Officer Lockstock. My heart's with the rebellion. Besides, the way I see it, I'm already in your in town. We all are. Even you. Me? In your in town? Sure. The way I see it, your in town isn't so much a place as it is a metaphysical place. What is your in town? Your in town is here. It's the town wherever people learn to live in fear. So look around, you finally found the place you asked about. For your in town is your town if you're hopeless down and out. For your Your town, if you're hopeless, down and down, 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 down. Where'd you go? Damn it. Welcome back to the show and enjoy what's left of it. Little Sally. I say five more seconds, and then we let her have the rope. Five, four, three, two, one. Geez, that was a close one. Cops crawling all over the place. Little Sally, where you been? Spying near the towers all. Cladwell and Fip and Miss Pennywise. They was all meeting up there. Some kind of, oh, I don't know what you want to call it. A quorum of some kind. That's it, she gets the rope. The rope? Stay up! Wait a minute, you can't just give her the rope. Why not? Because killing her would make us no better than them. Haven't you heard, little Sally? We are no better than them. In fact, we're worse. Worse? What do you think they talk about in those quorums they got up there? How good we are? So listen up now. Any second those cops are gonna bust in here and bust us up like a bunch of overripe cantaloupes. So why say it? As long as our juice has got to spill all over this floor here, our juice has got to spill to Gladwell juice. Then we'll see who's better than who. Look, at her there, all bound up, tagged high, with her head full of hair and her heart full of pride. Well, boys, I've had enough of the Jerrican curl. Bing, bang, boom, let's get tough. Play and rock, snuff that girl. Snuff that girl? But killing people is wrong. And why does it feel so right?
Let's bring our message of hate to the entire world. Yeah! Easy, friends. A message like ours is best put under extremely unbalanced circumstances. Such as we have right here? Exactly! Now, get the rope. That's right, the rope. Yeah, string her up! That's the answer. String up the stupid daughter of the criminal urinal chain owner, Cladwell! Yeah! <laughs> No one will be killing anyone around here. Why not? Because she's our security blanket, that's why. But, Bobby, we're so afraid. Killing her might make us feel powerful for a moment. Powerful. Friends, I know you're afraid. But this has got to be more than just revenge and the vicarious thrill of stringing someone up who can't defend herself. But why? We want to hang her as revenge for her father's crimes. I think he's in love with her. That's what I think. Maybe I am. What? <laughs> and maybe I made a promise up there. A promise that from here and now, that no man would be denied his essential humanity due to the condition of his pocketbook. That no man in need would be ignored by another with the means to help him. From this day forward, because of you, and you, and and you, we will look at our fellow men and see not only brothers, but sisters as well. What's that supposed to mean? When did he say that? I don't remember him saying that. All I remember him saying is, run, run for your lives, run! Well, well that was in the heat of the battle, but in the heat, the actual hotness of the battle, the cry of freedom sounds something like, run freedom, run, freedom run away. My friends, you have to run, 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 freedom run away. That freedom sun will shine someday. So then you better run, 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 freedom run away. I'm frightened. Oh, well, yeah, you should be. Freedom is scary. It's a blast of cool wind that burns your face to wake you up. Literally? Yes. There's a trickle of sweat, there's a trickle of sweat, a trippin' in your ear, trippin' in your ear. But still you have to run, 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 run. freedom run away.
be on the lookout for us, that's for sure. When the time comes, we fight the police. But how? With blood, guts, bru <laughs> brains if we have to. It may take years, and almost, and some of us will almost certainly not make it through the revolution alive. Maybe all of us. But fight on we will, with the decades necessary to claim freedom for the people of this land. Decades? <gasps> How about a real plan? Yeah. 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 I've got a real plan. What? Miss Pennywise, how did you find us down here? I had a feeling you'd be here. No one knows the sewer system like you do, Bobby. Or you. Claudio would like to talk to you, Bobby. About what? He wants to discuss the situation with you, man to man. He says he now finally understands how unhappy the people of this community have become, and he wants to work out a solution with you, peacefully. Now, there's a shortcut. That'll save us on the decades of struggle. But can we trust him? Claude will never wanted a fight. He just wanted the amenities I've been running smooth and natural. That's all he's ever wanted. What do you think, little Sally? I think it's going to be hard for your love to grow with Hope tied to that chair for the rest of her life. All right, I'll go. Bobby, no, what if it's a trick? Then it's a chance I'm willing to take. Yes! yes. And what about the girl? She stays here. Any funny business and she gets it. You tell that to Cladwell. Sure, I'll tell him. Same goes for him. She gets it, he gets it. You get me? We'll be careful. Now stay calm, Hope Darling. You'll be out of here in no time. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Hope. Is this the bright new day you were telling me about? I don't blame you for being angry with me. They may not have taught me much at the most expensive university in the world, but they taught me this much. Kidnapping people is wrong! Really? That's what they taught you there? I thought we had something special, Bobby. We do have something special together, Hope. But until freedom rules the people of this land instead of fear, love has as much of a chance as a baby bunny drowning in a vat of hot boiling water. Maybe less. I didn't mean to drag you into all of this hope. And I didn't mean to. Oh, I don't know what I meant to do. Look in your heart, Hope. I think you may be able to find the answer you're looking for in there, deep down, somewhere among the tissue. Wait a minute. When will I see you again? When darkness surrounds you and you've lost your way, you have your own compass that turns night to day. And it's even with you before you depart. Be still, hear it beating. It's leading you. Follow your... No, oh, Bobby. Cause quite excitement over the past few days, Mr. Strong. Getting a lot of people riled up. This is just the beginning, Mr. Cladwell. The people are ready to fight. Keeping my daughter confined against her will. Is that how the people fight? They'll fight by any means necessary. The streets are still ours, Mr. Strong. Your people are just held up in some underground sewer. They'll be up. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Cladwell. But there's a disturbance in public amenity number 32. Number 15 as well. Word has begun to spread. People have gathered at all the rest. They're waiting to see what young Bobby will do. After he meets with you, of course. Of course. Mr. McQueen. Do you remember the stink years, Mr. Strong? The years when the water table started to drop and just kept on dropping. 
No one thought we had much time then, and many of us did questionable things. Much like the things that are happening today. There was the looting, of course, and the hoarding. Riots broke out like there was no tomorrow, for there was no tomorrow. But there was always a tomorrow if you're tough enough to cling to it. Which is why I've asked you here today. Ooh. Some people see me as an <laughs> evil man. No, I love you. But I'm no more evil than you or Miss Pennywise or any of those poor people you insist on trying to lead. I'm just a simple man trying to cling on to tomorrow every day by any means necessary. And what happens when the drought is over? Over? <laughs> well, we can always hope, I suppose. But until then, our regimen of controlling consumption through the regulating mechanism of cash must continue. Ah, yes. The regulating mechanism of cash. Bobby, I want you to have this cash. And I want you to tell the people that the powers that be grant full amnesty to those involved in this week's criminal activity. Just as long as they agree to the new and improved fee hike as approved by the legislature. Don't let it happen again. And have a good time in Rio. So many tomorrows. <laughs> yes. But? I'm afraid my conscience will cost more than a pile of cash, Mr. Cladwell. Bobby, it really is an awful lot of cash. Free access is the only cash I'm interested in. I thought we had an understanding, Bobby. Then understand this. If there really, truly is a way to that bright, shining new future, we'll find it together, all of us, not just a wealthy few. And that means free access. Free access is impossible. Then that's what I'll tell the people. Stop! <clears throat> we will not return to the sink here, Mr. Strong. I will not allow it! Codwell, what are you doing? I've spent a lifetime building this company, paying off the police, bribing the political elite, and snuffing out popular resistance as if it were a naughty baby bunny in the palm of my hand. My right hand. I've centralized all power to a pinpoint spot right here between these two ears. And I'm not gonna let some dreamy-eyed boy who can't remember the stink ears ruin that for me. Seize him! Don't do it, Codwell. There's no telling what they'll do to the girl. That's just the risk I'll have to take. Yes! yes! He really is as evil as they say. You think just because I love my daughter I will stop clinging on to tomorrow? Oh, well, what are you saying? I closed my heart to love once, and I can do it again. Take you're in town with him. With all haste, Officer Lockstock. With all haste. You lied to us, Gladwell. Gladwell! Why did I listen to that man? Why did I listen to the nature of his plan? And when he talked, I should have balked. I should have walked. I should have ran. Why did I listen to that man? You, go get word to police headquarters. I want all hands on deck tonight. You, you, and you, stay with me. We'll see about these disturbances. And Fip. Yes, Cladwell? Assemble the legislature. I want full authority for the coming crackdown. And dirty my hands with your bad business? Not on my life. Don't kid yourself, Fip. Your hands are as dirty as a child's after sandbox time. But don't worry. You'll have your chance to wash them soon enough. Wash them by the banks of the Rio del Rio. Now, go. You, you, and you come with me. Why did I listen to that crook? <laughs> A little bribe and cash is all it really took. That's how that craven bullet maven made, made me cave and I'm a schnook. Why did I listen to that crook? You lied to us, Cladwell. You did one thing, then you did another. That's what you did, Cladwell. That's what you did! Oh, come on then, young Bobby. You can't go screaming all the way down to Urinetown. But Hope, she's with the others. 
What happens to me happens to her. What happens to you happens to all of us, sooner or later. Rather later than sooner, I'd say. But not to hope. Oh no, please, not hope. Now we finally got you. Now you're in our claws, captured in our city. Discuss. Now the law is speaking through us. You'll get your town. Off you go to your town. Away you go to your town. Now no more fun. Let go of me. I have to save hope. No saving hope now, Miss Pennywise. There'll be no saving you. Oh, yeah? Well, take that. What's this you're in town I've heard so much about? Perhaps better for us to show you. Step through the door and your town awaits. Door? More like a railing and pigeon. A rooftop? And a drop. A decisive drop. I guess I still don't understand. Never fear, the time of understanding is at hand. Welcome then to the very gates of your in town itself. Why did I listen to that cad? Went to work for him, he said he was so glad. Was he sincere? Well, now it's clear. And now I fear that, that I've been had. Why did I listen to that? That cat, that cat, that cat, my dad, 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 Wait a minute. There's public amenity number 47. And the legislature. And my boyhood home. Why? We're standing on top of the UGC headquarters, and this is our town. Yes, yes it is. But how can we be standing in our town and in your in town at the same time? That is, unless, oh dear God, no, you couldn't have. Over you go then. So you're just going to throw me off this roof, and that's supposed to be your in town? Death is your in town? That's one interpretation. Why did I listen to my Why did I listen to that? Dad, Dad, why did I listen to that? Shovel in the mop, Miss Beryl. You know the drill. by now. Huddle's not one to dilly-dally. All night, the sirens and the screams, maybe they're celebrating. <laughs> He's a good boy, my Bobby Strong. If anyone can find his way to freedom, he can. Otherwise, we kill the girl, right? That is the plan, isn't it? <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves now, shall we? Little Sally, what's going on out there? It, it, Yes? I saw Bobby. Yes? I... I don't think the meeting went very well. Why do you say that? Well, they threw him off a building. Little Sally, what are you saying? Who threw who off a building? Bobby, the policeman. They threw him off a building. The police threw Bobby off the building? couldn't have done such a thing. We have Cladwell's daughter. Well, they did. Is, is he all right? <laughs> um. Well, is he? Oh, Bobby, the policeman came soon enough, but not before I heard his
his last words. His last words? That's right. It was about her. Well, what were they? They were, tell her I love her. Tell her I'll always be with her. And I will see her in a better place where hope is always new. Ours was a short time. Ours was a love that never bloomed. Yet in It's calling out to you. Its call is soft and gentle, tame and fine. It's docile and benign. A pickle in the brine. What did I say? That isn't what I meant. I've lost my sense of scent. I fear my life is spent. No one is innocent. No one. No one is innocent? What did he mean by that? I don't know. He started fading in and out after a while. It was a miracle he was alive at all. The fall was so horrible. Was he talking about me? How can he say I'm not innocent? Not innocent of what? Not innocent? Who the hell does he think he is? We're sitting here protecting your hands. Wait! Girlfriend. Wait, please! There's more. He said, tell all the people. Tell them the time is always now. Tell them to fight for what they know is right. I've lost my sense of sight. And yet I see them. I see them standing hand in hand. I see them standing hand in hand. And cheek to cheek and glen to glen. There still is hope. I see it in this land. If only. Yes? Destroyed with a shove. What do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We do it to her what they did to him. That's right. You would hurt what they did to him. Or you could take me instead. What? what? Miss yes. Pennywise, seize her! Do what you feel you need to with me, but please spare the child. Old woman, you've been grasping and conniving all your days. Why so giving now? Because... Because Hope is my daughter. Yes! And I am her mother. Yes! Yes! Yes, it's true, Hope, dear. I am your mother, the one-time lover of Codwell B. Cladwell. Strumpet. Slattern. All right, call me what you will. But it was during the stink years, you see, and nobody thought they had much time, so people made questionable decisions. There was the looting and and the hoarding, of course, but there was also the late night truce and the fond farewells. Life was an explosion of riots and cheap cabarets and dancing girls and, and love. And love. There was love like there was no tomorrow. But we thought there was no tomorrow, but there is always a tomorrow of some kind or another. And hope after you were born, Cladwell made me promise never to reveal my identity to you because I was something of a strumpet in my day, but never in my wildest. Enough! Yes! yes. My heart 
is telling me many things right now, as you can all well imagine. But one thing it's bellowing about louder than anything else is that when there is wrong in this world, we must right it. You did a very wonderful thing by coming here today, Miss Pennywise. Mom. <laughs> and if we can reform you, then we can reform a lot more than we know. Ladies and gentlemen of the rebellion, if you want to do to me what they did to Bobby, I would not blame you. Caesar! But if this rebellion were to peter out in Bobby's absence, sending his memory into oblivion, I would blame you. All of you. <laughs> Kill me, and the rebellion dies with me. Let me lead you, and the rebellion will triumph. Lead us? She's mad! Lead yeah. you to the very nerve center of my father's empire. I have a key. And the guards know not to question me. But when we get there, we'll question Daddy. We will question him plenty. Why should we trust you? Because Bobby, your hero, loved me. And I loved him. Hope, dear girl. On behalf of the people of the Rebellion, perhaps we might be able to love you, too, someday. Isn't that what this is about? Love? Now, let's go do to them what they were ultimately going to do to us! Yeah! yeah! Devory, he's not sorry, not a shred! He's not sorry, he's not sorry. An absolute maze, that's what the sewer sorry. system is. I'm going back down to give it another sorry. look. You stay here and guard the streets. Uh, I've been meaning to ask, Mr. Lockstock, do you ever have doubts about what we've been doing? About the killings and all? It may surprise you to learn that sometimes I do. But the health and security of this town is my primary concern. I love the people of this town, Miss Beryl, very much. But Cladwell's edicts may be their only chance. And I love you very much. Uh, I see. Well, that went pretty well. Fly the blimp of evil, shun upheaval in the air. Then ask why the pride gets starry. I can sign my way to the legislature perfectly fine on my own, you know. No offense, Senator, but Mr. Cladwell didn't want you flying the coop well with the upcoming crackdown and all. And what if I am flying the coop? What if I'm on my way to the airport right now to catch the last flight to Rio? What would you say to that, huh? Can I come? Those who make dough from the from Officer Lockstock, Mr. McQueen? Not yet, sir. They're still searching the sewer system. This is where they'll be hiding hope, I imagine. <laughs> I only hope that when we meet in heaven, she can find it in the vastness of her heart to forgive me. Giving up on me so soon, Daddy? What? what? Miss Cladwell, what an 
unexpected surprise. Is there any other kind? Hope, darling, thank goodness you're safe. I'm not safe yet, Daddy, but I will be. Soon all the people of this land will be safe. Most of us, anyway. What? It's all over, Codwell. We've come to take you away. Take me away, but to where? The same place you sent young Bobby. And all so-and-so, too. And all those who couldn't or wouldn't meet your criminal fiat. Seize him! Hope! What's the meaning of this? I joined the revolution, Daddy. And you? I think it's time you joined the expat community in Urinetown. Yes! yes. You're making a terrible mistake, Hope, darling. You need me more than you know. What we need now, Daddy, is freedom for the people. And love? Oh, yes. And love. That's what I used to think, too. B before the stink years, but worldwide ecological devastation has a way of changing a man. You're, you're too young to understand it now, but there really are things more important than love. Food, water, shelter, for example. And piles and piles of cash. It just wasn't cash, Miss Pennywise. It was an awful lot of cash. So long power. Mr. So long money. I'm the money this time around. Remember when our nights were starry? Aren't you sorry? Sure, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Just fun sound. Take him away. I regret nothing, you hear me? Nothing! I might have been a cruel and vicious man and a bad father, but I kept the pee off the streets and the water in the ground, you hear me? I kept the water in the ground! What now, Ms. Clydewell? Today is a, a new day for all of us. It's the beginning. Today is, is a new day when each of us, regardless of race, creed, class, or criminal history, can come together as one people and share the fruits of our labor as one. Today marks the new day of an age of compassion and the right to do whatever you like, whenever you like, with whomever you like, in whatever location you'd like. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the final day of an age of fear. An age that has lasted far too long. Today marks the day of a new age. A new Don't age say it. of hope. It's me. <laughs> I see a river flowing for freedom. I see a river just. For freedom, I see a river straight and true. Come to the river flowing for justice. Come to the river rendezvous. Come to the river flowing for justice. All for the people, me and you. Well, as you guessed it, Hope took over her father's business, instituting a series of reforms that opened up the public bathrooms for all the people to pee for free whenever they liked, as much as they liked, for as long as they liked, with whomever they liked. The UGC was renamed the Bobby Strong Toilet Authority and was operated as a public trust for the benefits of the people. Officer Locksock, where'd you go? Oh, just keep my head down, little Sally. Something you should learn to do. But aren't you scared the rebels will see you? Oh, I may be a cop. But I'm also the narrator, so no one can touch me. Not unless they want the show to end. So many people peeing at will. 
thanks to the rebellion, the world is a much better place. Actually, Ms. Clavel, your father commissioned a study on water consumption right before. My father was a tyrant. We need never fear him again. Justice is the only tyrant we need obey. Sisters and brothers, fight for the river. It wasn't long until the water turned silty, brackish, and then disappeared altogether. As cruel as Colville v. Cladwell was, his measures effectively regulated water consumption, sparing the town the same faith as the phantom urine town. Hope chose to ignore these warning signs, however, preferring to bask the people's love for as long as it lasted. What kind of musical is this? The good guys finally take over, and then everything starts falling apart? Like I said, Little Sally, this isn't a happy musical. But the music's so happy. Yes, Little Sally, yes it is. Such a fever. If only I had a cool, tall glass of water. Maybe I'd have a fighting chance. Well, don't you see, Mrs. Strong? The glass of water is inside of you. It always has been. It has? Of course it has. Don't you know what you are? A river. That's right. We all are. You are the river, I am the river. He is the river, she is too. Oh, the river flowing for freedom, flowing for justice, let's review. We see a river flowing for freedom. We see a river just in view. You see a river flowing for freedom. You see a river straight and true. Say that, little Sally. Don't you think the people want to be told that their way of life is unsustainable? That and the title's awful. Can't we do a happy musical next time? If there is a next time, I'm sure we can. Well, that's it for our story. Hope eventually joined her father in a matter not quite so gentle. Mr. McQueen opened up his own bottle factory right outside of Brasilia, which did rather well until the Amazon dried up, and then he moved. For the rest of the people in this town, they did the best they could, for they were prepared for the world they inherited, weaned as they were on the legend born on their founding father scare tactics. For when the water dried up, they recognized their town for the first time for what it really was, but it was always waiting to be. 